Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionals one more time, continuing our great playlist called Pulmonology. In previous videos, we have talked about DVT and PE. Today, we'll talk about lung infections. If you have cough and dyspnea, you probably have a lung disease. One of five categories. Could be obstructive, restrictive, pulmonary vascular abnormality, such as pulmonary embolism or fat embolism, infection, malignancy. Today, we're talking infections. Infections could be pneumonia, tuberculosis, lung abscess, bronchitis, tracheitis, empyema, etc. So here are the lung infections. Pneumonia, mycobacterial infection or TB, fungal infections, aspiration syndromes, and lung abscess. Today we'll talk about lung abscess, aspiration syndromes, and fungal infections. In the next video, we'll talk about pneumonia and TB. Lung abscess. What's the definition of abscess? Abscess is a collection of pus. That's why lung abscess is a freaking suppurative lung disease. Suppuration means pus. What causes lung abscess? Could be inhalation of oropharyngeal content. This is the most common cause. Or it could be inhalation of a GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. If this is your beautiful stomach and you're having reflux, you are regurgitating those food particles up into your pharynx and then they can come back pew, to the lung. Will they go to the right lung or the left lung? Most commonly the right lung. Why? Because the right main stem bronchus is more vertical while the left is more horizontal and the right is bigger and the left is smaller. So by physics, just by the logistics of the place, it's more common to go to the right lung. Where specifically, if it's due to an inhalation, usually lower part of upper lobe or upper part of lower lobe, similar to primary tuberculosis. Causes of lung abscess may be bronchial obstruction. If you obstruct this bronchus by, let's say, cancer, a bronchogenic carcinoma, you will have an abscess distal to the obstructed bronchus because when you have like an obstruction here, you'll have stagnation here because they cannot drain up there. When you have stagnation, bacteria will love you, leading to abscess formation. If it's proximal obstruction, it's gonna be distal to the proximal obstruction. But if it's a distal obstruction in a very small bronchus, the abscess is gonna be here, in the periphery. Other causes of lung abscess could be pneumonia. Again, right more than left, usually in the lower lobe, and they are usually multiple foci or multiple abscesses, and they could be bilateral. But if you have clepsial and pneumonia, clepsial lo loves to cavitate in the upper lobe, lung abscess can happen on top of the old clepsial cavity. Or it could happen on top of secondary tuberculosis, which is an apical cavity in the apex of your lung, or on top of bronchiectasis. Lung abscess. What's an abscess? Collection of pus within tissue of the body. What kind of necrosis? Liquefactive necrosis. You start with a microorganism leading to infection, leading to liquefactive necrosis, leading to cavitation, and this is cavity formation. What's in the cavity? Inflammatory cells, inflammatory debris, mixture of bacteria, and frank pus. That's why an exam question will describe the typical patient as, let's say, 47-year-old male, smoker, bad oral hygiene, bad dentition, his mouth odor is so bad. Then he complains of cough. Is it dry or productive? It's, it's productive. What kind of sputum? It's frank pus. Tons of it, like cupfuls of it. Not teaspoons, but cupfuls. This is a classic description of lung abscess. Any abscess is an inflammation, so it has the cardinal signs of acute inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Since this happens in the lung, you will not see like the red lung because you cannot see the lung by naked eye, but you can see fever. What causes lung abscess? Most common causes oropharyngeal content aspiration going to the lung forming an abscess. The content is usually coming from below the true vocal cords, and we have talked about this before. Everything is true. Nobody cares about the pseudo or the false vestibular folds. The content is usually bacterial. Aspiration is the most common one. Location, it depends on the patient position during aspiration. Risk factors could be loss of consciousness because when you lose consciousness, you cannot swallow. When you cannot swallow, it can end up in your lung. What causes loss of consciousness? Major surgery because of anesthesia, endotracheal intubation, seizure or drug intoxication, esophageal abnormalities, you cannot swallow, swallowing defect, paralysis, or dental procedure, you can swallow this dental material. 
causes bacterial pneumonia, staph aureus, or Klebsiella leading to pneumonia, it can be complicated by lung abscess and maybe para-pneumonic effusion. Infective endocarditis, especially the right side of the heart, can lead to pyemia in the lung. Okay, here is your heart. Right ventricle is here and left ventricle is here. As you know, from the right ventricle emerge the pulmonary artery. Where does it go? It's called pulmonary, so it goes to the lung. So if you have infective endocarditis in the right side of the heart, it will just pump it to the lung. You'll end up with lung abscess. What causes right-sided endocarditis? If you are injecting anything into the vein, because as you know, venous return comes to the superior and inferior vena cavae, and they go to the right atrium, then the right ventricle. So, causes will include IV drug abuse, because they inject drugs into their veins, or dialysis with chronic venous access, such as cannula, again, access to vein, right atrium, right ventricle, pish, to the lung. Cancer patient receiving chemotherapy via chronic venous access. And instead of just injecting and starting a new IV every time, we just give a chronic venous access to the patient. So whenever they come, they are ready for the chemotherapy session. Cancer can cause bronchial obstruction leading to stagnation. Bacteria love stagnation leading to lung abscess distal to the cancer. If the cancer is proximal, the lung abscess is going to be proximal. If the cancer is alveolar cell cancer or anything that's very distal in a small bronchiole or bronchi, it's going to be a distal abscess in the periphery. But in any case, it's always distal to the obstruction. What are the causative organisms for lung abscess? Streptococci, aerobic or anaerobic? Anaerobic, in the typical example that I gave you, the old male who smokes with poor dentition and poor smell, or an alcoholic homeless man, etc. Staphylococci, anaerobes, fusobacterium, and bacteroides. What organisms live in the oropharynx, staph, and strep? They colonize the pharynx in like, I don't know, 15% of the population or something. What if you are homeless, alcoholic, heavy smoker with bad hygiene and poor addition? This is anaerobe. If you are an alcoholic or a diabetic, or you live in a senior home, etc., Klebsiella. And Klebsiella loves to cavitate the upper lobe, and it has a very thick wall and thick mucoid sputum. A very famous exam question. Clinically, symptoms, spiking fever, they go like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Cough, is it dry or productive? It's productive of what? Purulent, fitted, putrid, stanch, foul-smelling sputum could be pus-tinged or even frank pus, not just mucus that's tinged with pus, just frank pus, baby. Anaerobes lead to bad smell. And this pus literally smells like two dead fish having sex together. <laughs> That's not very helpful because none of you has ever smelled two dead fish having sex together. Plus, dead fish do not have sex together. They are dead. Signs of lung abscess, fever, hyperthermia. You can see tachycardia, again because of this infection. Abscess diagnosed diagnose lung abscess clinically by history and physical. CBC, you'll find leukocytosis. This is neutrophilic leukocytosis because it's usually bacterial. Radiologically, the abscess is a cavity with an air fluid level. It's like this on x-ray, like this. Air fluid level. Air fluid level. If it's an anaerobic bacteria, it's usually a single abscess. If it's septic emboli, multiple small abscesses. Translation, let's say you have an abscess in an organ. Well, what else say? Let's say liver. And then it went to the blood. A septic focus. Pyemia. And then it went to the lung. It's not going to be singular. It's going to be pew, 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 pew. Go multiple, multiple. Same thing with lung metastases. They look like this. They're not singular. It's plural, multiple. Location of the lung abscess, it depends on the position of the patient while aspirating. But regardless of the position, the most common location is upper part of lower lobe or lower part of upper lobe. So let's talk about the location and I've discussed this in greater detail in my first two videos about anatomy of the thorax, which was clinically oriented and awesome. If the patient is upright, translation, sitting or standing, it will go to the postrobasal segment of the right lower lobe, he's standing. His supine, superior segment of the right lower lobe, this is superior. If the patient was lying on his right side, it will go to the middle lobe or to the superior segment of the upper lobe.
the vein was lying on the left side will go to the lingula because it's equivalent to the middle lobe on the right lung. This is if the abscess is singular, but if it's multiple small abscesses in a septic emboli or pyemia, lower lobe, usually multiple and small. Why lower lobe? Because there is more perfusion in the lower lobe than the upper lobe. It's called gravity and I've talked about this before in my video about the VQ mismatch. How to manage lung abscess? You need antibiotics. To cover anaerobes, use clindamycin because we are talking about the lung here. What if the anaerobes are in your abdomen? Let's say a pseudomembranous colitis. In that case, we use metronidazole. So metronidazole is only for abdomen and pelvis anaerobes. If the anaerobes are anywhere else, including the lung, use clindamycin, not metro. What if the abscess was called by gram-negative bacteria? Use amoxicillin clavulinate. Why add a beta-lactamase inhibitor, which is clavulinate, to the amoxicillin? Because many of these bacteria produce beta-lactamase to try to resist the antibiotics. These bacteria are communists. That's a geopolitical joke. Complications of lung abscess. It might heal if the abscess is small, or it can have lots of complications. Empyema. There is a bronchopleural fistula between the abscess and the pleura, leading to pus in the pleura. What do you call pus in the pleura? We call it pleural empyema. Not to be confused with pyemia. Pyemia is a septic embolus in the blood. What else? Pneumothorax. Because there is air in the lung and there is fluid, very thin film of fluid in the pleura. Normally the pleura should have no air. But when you have an abscess and a bronchopleural fistula, Air can go into the pleura, leading to pneumothorax. Internal hemorrhage, which could be fatal if this abscess erodes into a large vessel. This abscess can lead to pleural empyema. Pleural empyema can lead to pyemia, which means a septic embolus in the blood. Please don't say pus in the blood because there is no such thing. Pyemia will go to everywhere, every organ. Can lead to abscess in any organ, such as brain abscess. And this will lead to focal neurological abnormalities, plus fever, plus tachycardia, plus leukocytosis, etc. Aspiration syndromes, there are five of them. One, aspiration of oropharyngeal content. Two, aspiration of gastric content. Three, foreign body aspiration. Four, aspiration of endogenous and exogenous lipid material into lipoid pneumonia, which is a cholesterol pneumonia. Aspiration of food or liquid, if you are an idiot who laughs while eating. Complications, aspiration, lead to bacterial infection, which can lead to bacterial pneumonia. If it's complicated, it can lead to cavitation, empyema, pyemia, septic embolus, abscess, anywhere. How to treat lung abscess or any aspiration syndrome? Antibiotics, to cover anaerobes, give clindamycin. To cover gram-negatives, give amoxicillin clavulinate. What if the aspiration syndrome was due to GERD? GERD will just lead to chemical pneumonitis. There is no need for antibiotics yet but if later the patient started having changed color or change in volume or change in the thickness or odor of the sputum started having fever and leukocytosis now this chemical pneumonitis is now a bacterial aspiration pneumonia and now you should give antibiotics let's talk about fungal infections in the lung first histoplasmosis organism histoplasma capsulatum notes it's the most common systemic fungal infection, and the mnemonic is highly habitual. It's very common. Hides in caves, and the caves have bat, and the bat have like poop. And the sport of going into the cave is called spelunking. And as Dr. Golian defied splunking, a splunker is an idiot who goes into caves. Histo hides in macrophages. Histo hides in Mississippi and Ohio river valleys. This is in the Midwest or it could be in the Caribbean. Bat poop. Starling poop. Starling is a dark bird. You find it a lot. In Chicago, for example, which is in the Midwest, by the way. You can find histo in chicken. So chicken farmers are exposed. Histo is a dimorphic fungus. Translation, it's mold in the cold, but yeast in the beast. What do you mean? I mean, if the temperature is cold, this histoplasma will form hyphae, which is a mold, hyphae like this. But if the temperature is hot, is hot it's going to form a yeast. Mold in the cold, yeast in the beast. Histoplasmosis will lead to lung cavitation, usually upper lobe. 
HIV patients with weak immunity, especially if CD4 starts falling below 100, this can lead to disseminated histoplasmosis and pneumonia. Disseminated goes everywhere. Oral ulcers, pancytopenia, splenomegaly, and it can even lead to caseous necrosis. Histoplasmosis is one of the causes of caseating granuloma. And I've talked about caseating and non-caseating granulomas in one of those previous videos in this glorious playlist of pulmonology. Next, blastomycosis by blastomyces dermatitides. Eastern and Central United States, let's say the Bronx in New York, or a blast in Chicago, it could be in the center. Great Lakes region and the five Great Lakes in the United States are Superior, Michigan, Erie, Ontario, and Huron. Fishing, gardening, hunting can expose you to blastomyces. Beaver dams. Beaver. Leave it to beaver. Leave it to beaver to get blastomycosis. Blastomyces have broad-based bud. Broad-based bud? Blasto. It's a dimorphic fungus. Translation, mold in the cold, yeast in the base. It can lead to lung disease, can disseminate to bone or skin, and it can mimic squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Cases necrosis, one of the causes of caseating granuloma, commoner in males than females. Coccidioides emetis leads to coccidioide mycosis, southwestern United States, California, Arizona, and the Grand Canyon. Everything here is C. California, Grand Canyon, this is coccidioide mycosis. Found in the desert and the valley, and the desert has cactus. So, C. Earthquake will lead to release of the fungal spores, leading to epidemics of coccidioide mycosis. And it happened in California before. They had an earthquake, and then the hospitals were flooded with coccidioide mycosis cases. An exam question might describe an archaeologist who went on an excavation trip and went into those, I don't know, caves or whatever to search for the ancient monuments. And then he comes with milky tears, neurological abnormalities, lung disease, etc. Diagnosis? Coccidioidomycosis. Coccidioides is a dimorphic fungus. Mold in the cold, yeast in the beast. Hyphae in the cold, yeast in the beast. Coccidioidomycosis can lead to lung disease, can disseminate into bone or skin, can lead to arthralgia, erythema nodosum, meningitis, or caseous necrosis. Next, we have aspergillosis by the aspergillus fumigatus. We have two types of aspergillus that you have to know for your exam. Number one is aspergillus fumigatus. It leads to aspergillosis and aspergilloma, and even allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which we have talked about before happens in a patient with chronic asthma or bronchiectasis, not responding to treatment, present with eosinophilia and brown sputum, etc. But the second type of aspergillus that's important for your exam is called aspergillus flavus, not fumigatus, but flavus. These are found in the aflatoxins in soybeans and grains, etc., and they increase your risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. The number one country where you can see this is Sudan, which is just south of Egypt, where I came from. So this is in Sudan. When you see hepatocellular carcinoma in Sudan, it's usually related to aspergillus flavus in the aflatoxins in the grains and soybeans, etc. But if you see hepatocellular carcinoma in Egypt, just northern to the invisible line, it's probably due to hepatitis C virus. Aspergillus fumigatus, branching septate hyphae. This is not a dimorphic fungus. This is just mold in the cold. It's just hyphae all the time. They branch at very narrow angles, usually less than 45 degrees, and they look like this. Look at these angles, very narrow, less than 45. You don't have to bring your compass or your protractor to the exam. Just get your head out of your sphincter. Aspergillus can invade on top of a previous cavity by TB or histo. So TB makes a cavity first, let's say secondary TB in the apex of the lung. Then aspergillus jumps on that cavity later. This is called an aspergilloma, also known as a fungus ball. If you are immunocompromised, he misses on a spread of aspergillus into invasive aspergillosis, necrotizing bronchopneumonia, and hemorrhagic infarctions. This is horrible. What does TB and HISTO have in common? Number one, both are intracellular pathogens. Number two, primary disease, they cause pneumonia with consolidation. 
Secondary disease, they affect the upper lobe, probably the apex, and they can cause disseminated infection, miliary TB, or disseminated histoplasmosis, respectively, if you have HIV, for example. They can cavitate in the upper lobe, we call them coin lesions. They can cause formation of a caseating granuloma with central caseous necrosis, which is cheesy. Aspergilloma, aka fungus ball, can happen on top of a cavity previously formed by tuberculosis or histoplasmosis. You'll not find these nice notes anywhere except here. That's why you're watching. Thank you. My favorite part of the lecture, everything here is an exam question. Aspiration-induced chemical pneumonitis can happen due to GERD when you aspire those gastric material, and this is called Mendelssohn syndrome. Learn two Aspergillus species for your exam. Number one, Aspergillus fumigatus. Number two, Aspergillus flavus. Aspergillus fumigatus will lead to aspergilloma or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or invasive pulmonary aspergillosis or disseminated aspergillosis or hematogenous dissemination. What else? Aspergillus flavus, on the other hand, formerly known as fungus flavus, is an aflatoxin in grains, soybean, nuts, etc. Hot and humid temperature will lead to mutation of arginine to serine at codon 249. This increases your risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. Clepsiella and the rule of twos. At risk population. Alcoholic, this is number one. Diabetic, this is number two. Bye bye liver, bye bye pancreas. Clepsiella can lead to two things consolidation, abscess formation. Consolidation, abscess formation, and two M's, mucoid colonies and pink on McConkeys. What's the most common cause of pneumonia in alcoholics? It's not Klebsiella. Very common mistake. It's actually strep pneumo, like everyone else. Common things are common. What are the causes of upper low cavitation? Secondary TB, histoplasmosis, Klebsiella, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergilloma, squamous cell carcinoma, and even Kaplan syndrome, a triad of complicated coal workers pneumoconiosis, plus rheumatoid nodules in the lung that can cavitate, plus rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notification and please like me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my premium videos, my cases, my post notes, including the slides of this video and every other video organized in Dropbox folders. Just go to patreon.com slash metacosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard.